another day, another vlog. This is your Denker's Getaway and today I am sitting next to Mr. Ugen Wangchuk who used to be teacher back in Bhutan and now is settled here in Australia, in particular Canberra. His story is very inspiring. Uh, last time when I met Mr. Ugen, uh, the passion that he have uh, with camera, with photography, with astro, uh, astrography is quite uh, interesting. But before we delve into uh, Mr. Ugen's passion, uh, um, I want to, I want, I want audience to know more about how you landed up here in Australia mm. and, and 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 the reason why I got very excited to interview you is because Australia is known to be land of hustler like mm. for, for Bhutanese mostly for Bhutanese everyone is hustling 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 and suddenly when I met you you spoke about photography you spoke about waiting waking up like at the break of the mm. dawn and like going out there taking picture which you're very passionate about so that's something which is very interesting and I think I want you to talk more about it. But before that, please introduce, introduce, you, please introduce yourself and, uh, and yeah, how is life here? Um, it's been uh, really good so far. Mm -hmm. um, firstly, uh -huh. um, let me um, thank you um, from the bottom of my heart Aww. for taking your time even though you're in Australia, I know people are busy, but you're busy as well, you know, <laughs> visiting one place to another. So taking time out, uh, particularly for me, um, in this, you know, in this podcast, video pod podcast, let's say, um, thank you again, once again. My pleasure. Um, back home, a um, couple of years, almost a decade ago, so mm -hmm. I used to be a teacher. Um, I was uh, teaching in a lower secondary school. Oh, so back then, uh, even when I was a teacher, I was so much interested into, you know, not mm -hmm. particularly astrophotography, right, right, but I right. was sort of, you know, I mean, not sort of, but so much interested in um, mm -hmm. um, media and right, video right, right, and right. sound and all how things, you know, work. So I was so much interested in, I used to um, work for our school, you know, whenever there was, whenever there were, you know, events, events you know, stuff. events that, uh -huh. that's totally based on media and sound and right. these things. I used to take some initiative. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I started, you know, growing my oh, interest since I see, then. I see, I see. And after being in the profession for almost a decade, then I decided to come here for and, studies. And that was when? Um, that was in 2015. Wow, that's pretty long. So, so, yeah. so it's it's been what more than 10 years that you have been in, been yes. here in Australia. It's almost 11 years now. Wow. So, did you ever go back home? I went back in 2017. Yeah, I think 2017. Wow, which was like six years ago. Yeah. So many things have changed. Mm. But anyways, yeah. Oh, and after coming to Australia, after your studies, what did you do? And mm. Yeah, I mean, like, um, when we were studying, uh, when I was studying, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I had to take up, like like many Bhutanese who come for the first time here, uh -huh. you know, as a student, right. you have that insecure feeling that if you don't work, you won't be able to, you know, <laughs> cover up so many things, so right. many holes. Right. So as a student, we take uh -huh. up, you know, as a student, like many Bhutanese, mm -hmm. we take up any sort of jobs that we wow. get, that we get. So. And you, you know, didn't have the hour restriction back then. Um, we we did have. Oh really? Yeah, we did have. Oh, we see, we did see, have some. Um, I mean, when we were doing, I mean, like I did masters, but like, for, I mean, for. People who were doing masters, mm -hmm. I think they mm -hmm. get to work forty hours. Not not student. Student do, don't get to work forty hours, but but oh, our dependents I they see, get I to see, work. See, so see, they see. they wear some restrictions. Wow. But I don't know. Like maybe people thought, okay, um, um, people thought maybe there were some restrictions. I mean, hey, okay, okay. there's no oh. restriction, but they wear restrictions. Right, right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting. So what what kind of jobs did you take? I mean, like. Um, most Bhutanese did. I, I, I took, I took mm. all sort of jobs, starting mm. from cleaning and mm -hmm. working in the kitchen, um, in, 
in afters and before school gear. Right, right, right. now, I, I, I'm working as an educator. Educator, yeah, so which is quite which, relatable to what you used to be yeah. in Bhutan. Wow. So of all the job, of all the job, which job did you enjoy the most? Um, yeah. I think uh, something different was, um, I worked as a pizza maker as well. Oh, wow, that's so, interesting. So um, that was something different mm. because it's, it's something that's not related to uh -huh. education and teaching and <laughs> dealing with children and all. Doesn't right. mean that I don't right. enjoy doing right. that thing. Right. I used right. to enjoy, right. but you know, since I taught there for almost a decade uh -huh. and then after coming here, dealing with children here in Australia uh -huh. again, and then doing pizza and you know. It's just out of the box. Yeah, it was something different and I really enjoyed that one. So, wow, Th that's yeah. interesting. But still you got back to being educator. So as a professional, okay, let's keep uh, passion beside mm -hmm. and let's talk about how different is it like being teacher in Bhutan? Like if I am to ask you, they name out three differences of education system in Bhutan. Mm versus education system here in Australia or you being teacher there and teacher here? What are the differences? Um, Is it easier here? I mean, I think, I mean, I mean, like, it's my, it's my personal opinion, you right. know. Um, things are different. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought things are a bit more challenging, challenging here as well. It, mm. it, it was challenging back at home. Right. But it's even more challenging here because um, when we come to a new country, when we settle down, when we learn to settle down right. in a new country, mm -hmm. you got to learn new policies, mm. you know, starting from, from, from the from base. Straight, right. So that was, that was one of uh, the most challenging thing. Right. I still face challenge, right. you know, I bet, learning I all bet, those things, bet, policies yeah. and um, regulations and this and that and so many other things. Right. Um, another thing was like, uh, is like, um, you know, children are given so much flexibility, so much uh, freedom. freedom here, independence. Wow. So that's another thing that... And no corporal punishment at th all, right? There's no corporal punishment. So <laughs> okay. if, if you ever land up, uh, you know, land up in doing one of those things, uh -huh. then you're going to be in thick soup. So, oh my gosh, so, okay. so it's always better to, wow. you know, comply uh -huh. Uh -huh. to the regulations. Uh -huh. uh, very strict regulations here regarding right. children. They're, right. they're being well supported with mm -hmm. policies and regulations mm -hmm. and so many other things in place for children, right, right, for right. them to grow and mm. um, thrive. Right, right, right. So, yeah, so we shouldn't be, and I mean, like, if if we comply all these things, we, mm -hmm. we, we are safe. Wow, that's, that, so. that's interesting. What would that one thing be if you are ever asked that, uh, if you are asked, oh, bring one change in education system in Bhutan. I think the like, education system in Bhutan is also good and is also thriving. But you, after working here for almost a decade now, what would that one thing be, given the mm. choice? Right, that's that's a thing to... Uh -huh. um, <laughs> Do you want time to think about? <laughs> yeah, I think... Um, there, there are so many things that comes to my mind when, uh -huh. uh, when we think of, uh, you know, mm -hmm. bringing changes right. and all. Um, all right. Um, or could be they're not bringing change, but adding, adding, something. adding something new in Bhutan mm. the education curriculum. What would that be? I think as, as, as I was like, um, as I was like uh, pointing it out or mm. earlier. Yeah. One thing that uh, struck me, you know, as an educator when I was working here uh -huh. is the amount of freedom mm. that children are given to them and uh, the amount of regulations and, you know, policies that backs up children mm. to thrive, uh -huh. to, you know, to build their own uh, mm -hmm. future. Right, right. I think one thing, that's one thing that really strikes me. Mm. So, so you wish it's in... Yeah, I Bhutanese think system yeah. as it's well. not not to say that yeah. those things are not there back in mm -hmm. Bhutan, but it is there. Yeah, so that's one thing that I mm. maybe if, you know people can work. Well, that's um that that's, that's something interesting. I hope the uh, people watching this actually like really take this suggestion mm. into consideration as well. But okay, leaving your pa uh, profession behind. So coming back to your passion. Like I said before, everyone is hustling in Australia. Mm. Everyone, like, I stay in the house. Like, I have my gym, I have my partner. Like, 
everyone is hustling basically hustling 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 and they don't have time for passion and i've met so many passionate individuals from bhutan who have actually moved to australia mm-hmm. because they they have found i mean according to them they think that oh it's not rewarding following their passion like mm-hmm. i'm i care so much about passion because my profession mm-hmm. grew out of my passion as well and most of the butanis who were once singer who were once actor i know you have acted in some movies as well so he sir is also an actor mai rogya mo bachin uh yeah da for the bobe so yeah so many actors so many like ha- yes handful of actors talented directors singers are moving out of country because mm-hmm. by passion they could be very passionate about singing dancing acting whatever but they think it's not rewarding and they move to australia to pursue different career or perhaps just to like financially mm-hmm. build themselves mm-hmm. out and they come here and you are here following your passion and last time when we met you said you woke up at 4 a.m. to what to to, to take do- I mean to take the pictures of for the stars. Exactly. He said Milky he woke Way. up at 4 to go take picture of the thing. Like how mm. do you manage? Aren't you busy like I mean I'm I am busy. Mm. But like if if one has that you know commitment Passions, yeah. oh. and dedication right. and if one one has that you know mm-hmm. push from within. Right. I think you can uh, I mean you can do everything you want. Mm. Um I just try my try my best to balance uh, right. my work and mm-hmm. uh, my passion. Wow. So as I said, um, I'm not I mm. mean like I'm doing photography photography as particularly yeah particularly astro astro, photo- yeah, astro, astro photography astro. which is I feel that which is um quite new back uh-huh. in home. I think it is very new. I've never yeah. heard of like I know like the sky photography and stuff mm. but I have not met anyone who is into astro photography perhaps I think you're the first one that mm. I know like what is it like what is astro photography um yes it is taking the pictures of um the, the night sky wow. so if i say one thing mm. um i know it is you know when we talk about photography mm. things get really expensive but mm. uh, with even with basic um, gears mm-hmm. you can get um, beautiful night night right. i mean night skies right. milky ways mm-hmm. uh, nebulas mm-hmm. then auroras and then maybe oh. some other stuff as well there are so many things to photograph um, wow. um you know at, at, right. of the night sky but i particularly i'm doing um, um the milky way and recently i've started doing uh, some nebulas and okay. some other galaxies as well oh my gosh i'm so, feeling so n- like dumb listening mm. to what you're saying cuz i just know milky ways i don't know any mm. other stars or stuff but yeah interesting oh yeah like um one thing that's very important like when we do astrophotography or any sort of photography is gears yes um gears could be any cameras mm. there are different kinds of cameras like full frame and mm. uh, um crop sensor right. micro micro third there's right. different kinds of cameras uh-huh. so it's not to say that you know this cam other cameras can't take pictures of right. the night sky right. any cameras can take a picture of the night sky but um but then um if you have a full frame camera um that's that's way be- better right 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 but one thing you need one thing you need is camera mm-hmm. any basic camera should be good mm. and another thing is that you need um, a nice sturdy tripod mm, okay because night night photography is mm. all to do with long exposures right 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 so long exposures if you if you are if you're holding um you know your camera with a hand uh-huh. you, we know that you know, we shake a lot so you won't be able to get any true, good, true, true. good pictures so uh-huh. camera uh-huh. steady tripod okay. then maybe you need another one is a remote control to you know click on a shutter start your shutter wow okay so you need that one a remote oh. shutter mm. and uh, yeah i think basically you can start with that one and uh, a lens right, a wide right. angle lens to right. start with right so people might think that uh, that you know astro astro photography it, it is quite expensive mm-hmm. but you can do with basic um, mm-hmm. setup like 
a white lens, maybe 14 mm, right, 2.8, right. and um, any camera you can start with. So mm -hmm. option is like if you can afford to mm -hmm. full frame, mm -hmm. but if you can't, Otherwise. then you can start with micro third or APS-C um, mm -hmm. okay. crop sensor cameras right, that you can right. start with. So. Well, in case, in case if it's like amateur photographer like me, like I invest in buying these cameras, do you think it's worth it? Like if I have to, mm. if I decide to be like, oh, I want to be like full-fledged astrophotographer, do you think it's going to be rewarding or worth it? Mm. Is there a market for astrophotographers? I mean, personally, um, I think, um, I'm thinking it might depend from person to person, but right, um, right now as I'm, I'm so much passionate about what I'm doing, mm -hmm. I haven't taken this one as a business entity Yet. as well, right. because I just want to build it Less. on. I'm, I'm, I'm getting a feeling that mm -hmm. once you reach at that level, right. naturally things are going to indeed, work out. Indeed, I'm sure, I'm sure. So, now, when you're saying that, mm -hmm. you know, if things could mm -hmm. work out or not, um, it's going to take time. It's it going, it, definitely, sure. it's going, going to sure, take time. I'm sure, I'm sure. Um, but like, uh, if you try and find mm -hmm. a niche, you know, right. kind of thing, mm -hmm. something different, which other photo photographers are not thinking about it, or other astro photographers right. are not thinking about it. There are right. different kind of astro photography that nice. you can do as well, deep space. What I'm doing is right now, you know, some sort of wide angle yes. you know, Milky Way mm -hmm. photography. Mm -hmm. And you can take the photography of, um, another galaxy, nebulas and constellations and auroras. Right. You can focus on different kind of night photography. Nice. And I find that um, there is scope. Mm -hmm. There is scope mm -hmm. if you can mm -hmm. persist and if you can commit, right. you know, if you can commit to it, uh, put some effort. Effort. effort more in, effort. Yeah, more effort <laughs> into what you're doing. If you love, exactly. if you love and show uh, uh -huh. people, you know, across different platforms, of what you are doing, mm -hmm. how you love it, mm -hmm. if you can show it, and mm -hmm. then if you be, uh, if you be very consistent right. about it, right. I find that there is some, there is scope. So. Scope, right? Yeah. And then talking of scope, other time you said that you also have the photographer fraternity. Like, is there any other Bhutanese who are also involved in, like astro? I don't think so, but I'm just mm -hmm. like. Asking, um, yes, we do have a small, I mean, Bhutanese, you know, Bhutanese. Oh, wow, group like of, Bhutanese group uh, of yeah, photographers. Bhutanese group of oh, photographers. This is a news um, for me. Yeah, based here in, um, I mean, in Canberra. Canberra. So we try and we try our best to, you know, as and when there is a big celestial event, um, if, if there is some interesting thing going on, right. going on like right. the Aurora, which is going to happen maybe this Thursday or Friday, it's a big thing. It's, is it? It's a, it's such a big Ooh, thing. Time to and take out all my stones. Yes, yes, yeah. you should definitely. I mean, like if you if you get some time, yes. you should go out. I think after sunset, um, uh, towards the south, towards yes. facing south. With oh, clear, I live in the south, so with cl clear horizon, there shouldn't be okay. any obstacles uh, on the way. Cl facing south, mm. clear horizon. Yes. Yes. So there's a there's going to be a big um, aurora, Australia's. Um, Aurora Australis, as we see here in the ah, Southern Hemisphere. That's all. So there's going to be a big spectacle. So This Friday? Yeah, this Friday, starting this... It could even start today, today, today night, Ooh. tomorrow night. Ah, it's such a big thing. So, wow. yeah, during such, you know, celestial big event like um, Aurora or mm -hmm. another thing is next week, you know, 12th of October, there's a big comet that that's has, you know, that has come within the orbit of our Earth. Yes. So this comet is visiting um, after a cycle of 80,000 80, years. Whoa, that's so crazy. So another 80,000, okay. you won't be able to see this comet, which is called um, Suchin Shan Atlas. Okay, what time do you expect? So it's going to be in the evening after sunset. If you go out um, in the oh, evening wow. facing west, yes. facing west um, with no obstacles, yes. you, you, can, um, you can have a look at where the sun sets. And then if you can't see it, if you, uh -huh. if you have a binocular, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, it, it will help you. But even if you don't have a binocular, I think um, that's what the experts are right, saying. Right, right, right. So it should be bright enough for our naked eyes to see um, Su Chin Shan co Comet. Wow, that's so interesting. It's, oh it's my once God. in a life, oh, uh, lifetime that's... experience you wow. will have. So if you get time. For I some, definitely... it's not even once. Yeah, it's like 80,000 years. Exactly. So, so. 
Whoa, that's crazy. It's, a, it's such a big thing. Oh, I see. So that's when all the Bhutanese photographers yeah, like in, yourself in, come together. Like in such an event, when we have such an event, uh, what I do is I mm. share, it's, it's, it's on a messenger group. We have, we have a group and then I share, you know, details of what time and where, sh where we should go and watch. So oh. we, we find ourselves a time in the evening, s several hours. Wow, this and is then nice. We go and should, 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 you know, uh, stars right. and other things. Wow. All this time, I thought, uh, especially Bhutanese living in Australia, was uh, bonded together either by archery, either mm -hmm. by a group of singers coming from Bhutan to perform here, or either on national days. But I guess the another edition is photography again, mm -hmm. like photograph, mm -hmm. uh, photography bringing all the Bhutanese enthusiastic photographers bringing together me mm. which is really good to hear and this is this is a very silly question it's the last time in the evening or perhaps towards the night my sister was like oh you should the first thing she said when i arrived in australia mm. that evening she said oh you should just go out and watch the star the star looks bigger from australia yes, yes. Uh, like, definitely how yeah. i mean i don't know physics about mm. it how i mean like um by no means I'm trying to say it. I'm, I'm an expert. <laughs> yeah, but, you're you better know, than me. But I've oh. been in this um, in this business for some time. Right. And I mean, learning is lifelong, isn't uh -huh. it? I'm, I'm, I'm still learning as well. I like learning about the stars and the galaxies and all those things. Mm. So, um, I mean, experts are saying that um, nice. Australia, Australia, particularly here in Canberra, we have one of the best skies in the world. So if you go south, you can, oh. you can drive only about... Um, you can drive only about, let's say, at the max, one hour drive from here to south. Right. And you can see on a clear, on a clear, I mean, moonless night, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. moonless night, if you go and happen to watch the gaze at the sky, right. you'll be able to, you know, see the Milky Way arc. Oh, at this time of the year. Okay, my sister was not wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at this time of the year, especially, like when we go out to shoot the Milky Way, we need to also look at moon phases. That, that's one thing which is very nice. important, moon phase and away from light pollution. Okay. So if you're shooting, if, we are, if you're trying to gaze at the star from, mm. from the city, definitely mm. you won't be able to see. Right. So you, you need to at least, let's say, drive for maybe here in Canberra, let's say uh -huh. at the max, one hour right. or... If you can't make it one hour, maybe uh -huh. 30, 40 minutes should be fine. Oh, so okay. you should be able to see one of the, I mean, biggest, biggest, biggest and closest uh, and, uh, stars. Yeah, one of the brightest and something that unique. Um, that's what most of the astro astrophotographers are saying that in Australia, Milky Way, uh, you know, looks appears better than the northern hemisphere oh, australia is in the wow, southern that's hemisphere. interesting yeah, something so. very informative so i think you have chosen the best avenue for yourself to be the astro photographer that's what i'm thinking as well so <laughs> i'm in the right place at the exactly, right time exactly right yeah, oh so. beautiful beautiful well wow, this is interesting so what's what's been the most memorable um, days of your life where you took one of the best picture of any stars or any? I think, I think uh, recently, it was a recent experience, like um, I came to learn from, we, we, as I said earlier, we constantly learn. I have another friend, uh, uh, as an associate lecturer in ANU here. Mm -hmm. uh, she's very good in doing all those things as, as well, you know, technically. Nice. So we keep on learning from each other. So she shared me the thing and I was excited at, at the same time. as mm -hmm. I went thrice early in the morning at I woke up at three o'clock in the morning. I went thrice to Lake George wow. at a lookout, and I shot the Suchin Shan Atlas. Which oh yeah, I, I saw the earlier. picture you posted. So I shot that one on a, on, I mean, on twice, two occasions. I shot both, um, you know, both the comet, which was which was a beautiful experience. Wow. And I shared it. I mean, okay. there are people like you know, there are people like me and people like others mm -hmm. who don't get to see. Right, right, so just right. for their pleasure, uh -huh. you know, just for their pleasure, I shared it across um, the social media platform. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, I was one of them. I saw the picture. Wow, that's nice. Like at three, some people, they hustle to go to work. And here's this man who hustles, like going out with camera just to take picture of the star. Mm. Crazy. But that clearly shows how passionate you are. So tell us, you were an actor before, once. 
When you were acting in Bhutan, did you ever think that, oh, someday I might land up in Australia taking pictures mm. of stars or educating the, uh, the children here in Australia? Like, um, I think it is... Um, what was the name of the movie? Um, it was on, I tried to find it on YouTube. It, I couldn't find it. I don't think it's on YouTube. Like it, oh. uh, it was totally a voluntary. You know, we volunteered for um, to be an actor. Yes. Did it work back then? Uh, I, 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 was, I was in my final year in in my college. So, Sharapti. No, not in Sharapti, in Paro College of Education. Hey, that's oh. So that's when uh, that's where I was, and a group of our friends who were so enthusiastic in you know movie in making? movie making and uh -huh. all those things. One of our friends, uh, he came up with an idea, script, and all those things, and uh, he convinced us. You know, Ooh. how about we do this one? And we said, all right, let's give it a go. Uh -huh. So that's how we, you know, landed up. Um, Taking small parts, um, part. I think that. you were the you were the lead yeah, of the film. One of um, were you the most good looking one in the group that <laughs> you got chosen to be the. Thank you. In those days, <laughs> 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 now no more. So. No, you still. Yeah, then you're still good looking. Thank you. And um, yeah, from from that you know sort of project onwards, I I, I was just you know I was just. I mean, I, I just wondered how these things work, you know. <laughs> right. And then later when I came back here, uh -huh. I just took my passion. It was hard, you know, right, when right, I started, it right. was hard. Not, not to say that I, I'm doing really well and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this is who I am. I'm, right. not, trying to, I'm not trying to portray that right, one, right, but right. everyone, I think, uh -huh. um, goes through that stage. Uh -huh. And if, if, I mean, if people um, are just starting right now, uh -huh. Don't feel in that way. Mm. I think everyone, uh, we as I mean, um, I mean, media or content creators, right. we go through all the stages. Oh, yes. We have to start from there. So don't give up. You know, even if you have a basic um, gears, mm -hmm. you can do that yeah. one. So that's how I landed up being. You know, and now was, you're a professional one. Um, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Indeed. But gears, when it comes to me, when I started to travel vlog, I actually started from my phone. Mm. And when you said you need basics, which were all cameras, cameras, mm. does astro photography work on a mobile phone as well? Um, these days, the mobile phones are... As compatible as, as cameras. As powerful as, as pow powerful as the cameras, but I prefer... Um, camera cameras because the size of um, okay. the size of the sensor right. in the camera is bigger wow okay. so if you have bigger sensor nice. then the amount of light that your light, light mm -hmm. that your mm -hmm. camera can mm -hmm. collect is will be it will be totally different because mobile phone Mobile phones are big enough, but their sensor, you know, is Don't like that. do that. Yeah. It's like so biased. I'm more a mobile girl. <laughs> I mean, but, I think uh, you're using Sony, right? Yeah, I Sony, do have Sony that. Is one of the, Sony is one of the best um, mm. cameras. Right. For in the, it's quite so. expensive also. But yeah. like now you, I'm sure you must have explored Nook and Canny of mm. Canberra to get the best photographies. Do you, are you planning to come back home and pursue this passion of being an astrophotographer yes. because in Bhutan like you said is very new like especially mm. for me is very new and I'm sure mm. the audience can feel this feel yeah I've been thinking about this one and I do have contact with um, you know few people on Facebook and I came across a group um, studying about you know they have a Facebook group from Bhutan where it says, let's learn about astronomy. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, that's so interesting. It's a small group, but it, they're building it and they invited me to become an admin as well. And I said, okay, let's give a try. You know, oh, I wow, might. that's exciting. It's going, going to take time. but And they, they, they've shown so much enthusiasm in you know building mm -hmm. and learning all those things. And I said, okay, maybe I could contribute, uh, you know, mm. Um, in some manner right, to right. you know to come up with some content regarding. Mm -hmm. So I've been posting you know some on um, Facebook, some, something on Facebook and, and across it's, some it's other Instagram yeah. as well. Yeah, so I've been thinking about. Yeah, I'm excited as well because Bhutan has um, our country has beautiful landscapes. Indeed, that's and what I was thinking. I'm thinking about. Oh my God. You know, Bhutan has so beautiful landscape where I can blend in so well. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Particularly, maybe 
at with the, the snowy mountains. Yeah, at the mountains, definitely. And we have beautiful monasteries, yeah. zongs, mm -hmm. and there are so many things which I'm thinking of using it as a foreground. Uh -huh. You have not used it yet. I have used one hey, or okay. two. Oh. Um, during my last visit, I have nice. used one or two. Nice. Um, but I'm thinking more about using mm. some other interesting um, foregrounds uh, oh, from interesting. Bhutan. But sadly, one thing I found was like uh, most of uh, the zongs okay. and monasteries are now lighted up, which which is which is <laughs> oh, which that is backfires. quite which is against what what I'm doing. But, oh no! But yeah. But um, doesn't mean that we can't. You know, doesn't mean that we mm -hmm. can't. Mm -hmm. Do right, right, photography right. with you know lights, lights, lights all around, uh -huh. but it hampers a bit. Mm, yeah, that's something I didn't think about. Yeah. I thought like it glorifies the image. More. Yeah, we can uh, we can work it to a certain extent with lights and all those hey. things, but you know, it hampers a bit as well for the quality of the image. Ah, okay, so okay, okay. I was thinking like Puna mm -hmm. then Wang Di Zhang, which is on the ridge. You know, I could use beautifully, right. but. When it gets night, then you see, you know, so many, you know, floodlights mm. and so much brightness and all right, it, right, right, yeah, right. So it gets a bit challenging. So. Oh, that's, that's, that's interesting. I look forward to your photographs from mm. Bhutan someday. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know when that someday <laughs> will be. That's, I'm sure that's one question uh, I love to ask and that particular question many uh, do not fancy to be asked. Mm. When are you coming home, Ani? When are you coming home? <laughs> I think, uh, and I'm not really sure right now when I'm coming home, but I might, um, I might go soon okay. um, to take photographs, particularly. I've been, I've been taking. That's a good, that's a good news. Mm. I'm a thank God. At least you have answer mm. for that. And uh, so we were just talking before this shoot, and we were talking about parenthood here. Mm. You're an educator yourself uh, by passion. You're a photographer. And uh, you're a parent as well, and you have your kids here. They're studying here. How how is how is it raising your children here? Now I'm letting you compare. I'm just uh, comparing mm. you being here and being back at home. How easy or how challenging is it for you to raise your kids here? Um, it's it's my own opinion. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm I believe um, all the parents. Um, um, you know, who has come here and settled mm -hmm. out here must mm -hmm. have gone through uh, the same phase, right. same phase in life. Mm -hmm. um, who were born here, children who were born here, born here could be different. Children who were being, you know, after they after they were born, born in back Bhutan. in Bhutan and they were being brought here, could they joined different. later. It's a bit different for them. Uh -huh. The children must have gone through the same situation that we went through. They must have had. They don't tell, but they must have gone through, you know, the, like... The phase of transitioning yeah, from transitioning, moving here. pressure, culture yes. shock, yes. this and that. They don't say that one, but I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I'm very sure mm -hmm. they must have gone through all those things. So it's challenging um, because like new place, new country, as I said earlier, you know, new things to learn. And particularly, I have, I have two boys uh, who are both in, who are both teenagers. Mm -hmm. So... Um, physically, you know, emotionally, psychologically, mm. there are so many things going on <laughs> right, inside right. and outside. Right. So, which, which actually, we, it's harder for uh, us as parents, parents to under, too. understand, unless they don't, you know, speak it out. Speak it out. It's harder for us to understand. So, there's a lot of challenges that we go through <laughs> okay. day, day in, day out. Right. Right. Lots. Wow. I can't. I can't say specifically. specifically mm -hmm. But I'm sure most of the parents here. Is it easier to raise here, or do you think it's easier to raise children <sighs> back in Bhutan? I think it's difficult here. I'm, I'm, that's mm. what I'm. I'm yes. getting a sense. Yes. It's difficult. Mm. As I said earlier, like if they were born here, right, could be a little bit different. 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 Exactly. But since they were being, you know, they joined you later here. Mm -hmm. Things a bit difficult. Different. The wow. transition, less, less. that you know, cultural shock, shock or whatever you know, it's mm -hmm. a bit different for them. So mm. Mm. I think I can also agree to what you just said because I met some 
of the children who I knew in Bhutan who are now here and they shared the same. Mm. It's been like, oh, very difficult. And only one thing and regarding the schooling, I was just asking, oh, what's the difference between studying here versus studying in Bhutan? And promptly, mm -hmm. one little girl, Bhutanese, she said, oh, auntie, in Bhutan, we used to learn about Guru Rinpoche. You know what? In our school here, we learn about Jesus Christ. Mm. And I was like, wow, that's wonderful. <laughs> mm. I didn't have any comments over that. But I guess it's the time mm. and the place that matters. Yeah, I think so. Like, yeah. um, even, even our children went to, you know, similar schools. Right, right. And, um, but then at the end of the day, I think it comes to us as parents mm. how to, you know, mm. keep them on the track. Right. Um, and have not the to values. say that, yeah, and have that you know Bhutanese value or Buddhist value or whatever thing that you want to instill in your children. Keep right. that thing in, intact, mm -hmm. but not saying that the other one is bad. You know, exactly. They, true, 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 they true, more true. or less have the same values mm -hmm. like love. You know, not to do these compassion, do yeah, kindness. So it's, it's more or less the mm -hmm. same. Mm -hmm. But to keep that thing uh, within them intact, I think it comes to us Parenting. at the end of the day. So. Oh. That's interesting. I think as a parent also you are thriving here because sir, your boys need to high school now. Now, is there anything I missed to ask you? Um, is there anything you want to delve upon? I think... Um, I think I'll have one last question. Yeah, I yeah. think... Uh, I'll just stop there. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Oh, I'll hear you. Hit my joy camera. My Okay. So I think um, people might think like... Um, when we we had a talk about having basic um, basic um, gears, oh. and uh, one thing we had a talk was about oh. uh, knowing mm. about location, where to go. Another thing was right. you have to have a look at the moon phases. Oh, moon phases. If you're going during a full moon, unless you're shooting full moon, if you're going during full moon night, you won't be able to see the stars because right. it will be washed away. So ah, yeah, so it's that always. Makes sense. Oh my gosh, why didn't I think about it? Mm. So it's always better if you want to see the Milky Way and the stars as bright as possible, go during the new moon time. So you No Tse no Changa, not on Tse no Changa. Unless you're shooting the Tse Changa, <laughs> you'll Tse Changa. Oh wow, so, okay. That makes sense. Oh mm. my God, I think I'm oh, right. So whenever you want to shoot um, the best possible Milky Way, sharp as possible, you know, clear as possible, then it's better to go during the new moon time. So make, to make these things, um, you know, easy, um, there are multiple of um, apps that, uh, that, that are on the market uh -huh. to make things very easy for our photograph. Concerned about AI, right? Right, we, right, we, right. We're, we're thinking about AI and all, all those things a uh -huh. lot. If we take into account uh, AI properly, I think it helps a lot. For, uh, for instance, um, mm -hmm. particularly with me doing astrophotography, I use photo peels, I use um, Sky Tonight, I use Stellarium, I use so many other apps, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which, which, which you take it with, you download it and take it with, they are um, free apps as well and Less. paid apps as well. Less. So if you take it uh, to, a, to a location and if you just point it in the sky, you'll be able to see which direction, the, you know, oh, what time, I see, I see, I see. and then you can plan accordingly. So planning, oh, is one crazy. Thing, yeah, planning is one thing that's very important and you know, if you have these um, apps in hand, mm -hmm. be it in terms of weather, cloud, rain, sun, moon, mm -hmm. if you think about having that photograph specific, specifically if you want to have a photograph right in, on top of Puna Hazong mm -hmm. at that time of the year, you can do that one, but you have, you have to put in a lot of effort and planning. If you can't do wow. this, if you can't do it this year, Let's so you can plan it on the you know calendar next year. Yeah, for next year or maybe next okay, few years I'm down not, the line. I'm not meant for astrophotography <laughs> with this. Then, so it takes. Oh wow! Okay. Um, it takes it takes time. Patience. It, lots you of need to patience. have a lot of patience, and everything in night photography is about waiting. So you might Oof. do, for, ex for example... I think I'm not for this. I've realized I'm not for this. <laughs> for example, oh. if you... For example, one, one fine example, like um, people might wonder, you know, if you do a star trail, you'll have to take maybe 1,000 1, photos or maybe even more 1,000 photos to get one product at the end of the day. Oof. So 
that's that's a lot of patience that a lot that's a lot of time but in in astrophotography it's like that the more data you gather mm -hmm. the better you the, the better picture you will get it mm, clear yes. noiseless so that's how it works wow okay that's definitely something which is quite therapeutic also i guess mm. yeah i mean like yeah. uh, um, I mean, rightly pointed out. So it has been really, you know, Therapy. good for me. Right. In, Were you going through a lot? Yeah. When that you going, had to choose this. Yeah. When we're going through a lot with children back in home, children at home and in school where I work. And so that's your gateway yeah. to freedom. And then I and get this outlet to, you know, release my wow. uh, whatever energy, right. you know, maybe negative or maybe some other right. energy. Right. You get to release that one, go out connect with the na nature, nature look indeed. at the stars up. we always tend to look up the sky isn't it Aww. so that's when i get get time to look at the stars and wonder and then get that uh, sense of peace right, right. within in me so oh, i think it's very contagious i just felt it the moment you showed or you shared about mm -hmm. what how it makes you feel like extra photography he, i i just saw the brightest star on his like eyes it was like this makes me <laughs> Thank happy. You. it is really uh, i mean it right? is really yeah. ad addictive uh, i bet i bet yes, it i is. hope your wife is not scolding you over spending too much of time there waking up too early rather mm. than being at home like how is she like generally she's been supportive so far she's sometimes you know as humans <laughs> as humans you know um she 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 binges some you know right. sometimes, mm -hmm. but I'm already she's she's been okay supportive so far. Oh, that's, that's why nice. I feel that I'm fortunate. Indeed, no no. See on serious mm -hmm. note, if you really want to pursue passion, I think you need to have partner who is mm -hmm. equally supportive, mm -hmm. progressive as you are. So lucky you. Um, so far, <laughs> yeah. No no. I think mm -hmm. you're very lucky. Okay, so before we uh, conclude on. Uh, okay, last but not mm -hmm. the least, maybe the, this could be, I don't know, perhaps could be easiest or the toughest question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, you have been in the field of acting, so you know what A goes, yeah, <laughs> what, what goes on screen. Mm. It's, it, it takes talent to be an actor. Mm. Uh, by profession, you have taken the most noble profession uh, of all teaching mm. and your educator here in Australia as well and by passion you're a photographer astrophotographer um, if you're given only one choice in life just choose one you you cannot differentiate between profession or passion just choose one which one would you choose I'm oh old. and including fatherhood <laughs> parenthood yeah you have four options which one would you choose parenthood uh -huh. being an actor being an astrophotographer or being an educator, which one would you choose, and why? <laughs> can it can it be a mix of two? <laughs> no, no, it's like strictly one, just one. Right. All right. So, as I'm going through all those, you know, all those all those hurdles which everyone goes through. Right. So, right. Um, I choose parenthood um, wow. as the first thing. Wow, that's something I didn't expect, but yeah. <laughs> I should have included parenthood, that mm. was my fourth option. But at the same time, uh, I, can't, I can't just leave behind right. what I love doing. Mm -hmm. So I'm just bringing, okay. bringing it along with me. But you yes. choose parenthood yes, over yes, everything. Yeah. I think which is very important also. Yeah, especially here in Australia, yeah, in a foreign land with so many things different. So Right. Yeah, I think I choose parenthood. parenthood. But I think as a parent, you're also doing amazing. And yeah, I, I totally forgot to mention, uh, Sir Ugen is also one of the recipient of... Uh, uh, I forgot to mention, Sir Ugen, you have also received award for being mm. one of the best photographer for multiculture. Yeah, Canberra Multicultural. There's a radio station. Right. <laughs> For whom I used to be a volunteer as well as a radio jockey. Wow, here in Canberra? Yeah, Canberra. Oh, we used wow. to have a Zonka program. We what? used to have a Zonka program every Saturday and Sunday. We used to run when? that one. So we ran that one for almost three years. So it has become quite inactive. Wow, this is something right now, very new. Right now it has become, I mean, inactive. Because everyone's making money? Yeah, working everyone hard, is busy. No time. And Everybody has to, you know, volunteer <laughs> oh, here. I so see, see, see. for the welfare of our Bhutanese community and Bless. all, we we volunteered. I volunteered. A group of friends volunteered. Somehow, 
let's say, unfortunately, we couldn't uh, continue it um, going physically to the radio station. Oh, no. which is Are you in planning West- to... I used to, I, I ran for almost, uh, I, let's say, almost three years. three years I ran. I had to go every, every early morning Saturday and Sunday night from 9 to 10. So that, that was, was not your passion because mm. you don't mind waking up at 3 and going to, yeah. <laughs> going for a photography mm. session. I enjoyed it. Mm. Somehow, you know, it helped me connect with people and all this. Oh, I enjoyed I, it. I but, hope the mm. radio station restarts a Zonka program. Yeah, we because I think to, now you have more Bhutanese yeah. here. We're hoping that we can revive that one, oh, bring it nice. back. Oh, and, that's interesting. Yeah, so hopefully we'll, yeah. we'll be able to do it again. So. Wow. Because okay. there, there used to be a small, I mean, not a small community. Yes. Um, around about 35, you know, 35 diverse culture, you know, from different parts of the world, you know, having programs wow. weekly. So. I wonder not mind if we get employed. To be the radio jockey. It is interesting. I in I Tangla. Yeah, I, th- I was I was also thinking about doing it in Tangla once. Yeah. But like, but like since people are busy, you know, even if you have ideas, then you need mm, people that, to talk to, also. and also mm. it was quite challenging. So. And then getting back to the award, it's such oh, a yes. shame that you all stopped. But I mm. hope you all revive somehow the, that's connected. Yeah, also. revive the mm. program again. Mm. But yeah. Somehow that's connected to the multicultural radio station. They they came up with um, photography sort of competition yes. award and all those things. Yes. So I took part it in took part in it yes. and I happened to be yes. winning. I happened to win that um, overall um, wow. sort of competition, which was wow. which was good on me. And that wow. that actually you know Built. gave me a spark mm. to you know further right. enhance and go on right. you know developing so yeah, that really helped me to wow congratulations yeah, thank you so much well, i hope you get many more awards uh, down the line and keep continuing taking amazing astro photograph uh, photographies and for those of you watching us i'll share the link to sir ugenji page now follow if you're passionate about uh, astro mm. photography then Feel free to DM, sir. I'm sure he'll give you a master, extended master mm-hmm. class when he has time, of course. <laughs> Otherwise, every, everyone is busy here. And with this, would you, do you have any message to all the viewers here mm-hmm. watching about regarding anything living in Australia? Could be being at home or it could be a specific message for Bhutanese living in Bhutan mm-hmm. from Australia. Thank you so much. Once again, um, Usa Denka. Thank you so much uh, for taking time and talking to me. Um, it's indeed a you know, great pleasure. Thank you so much once again. And um, um, just to let people know that things are not easy. You know, Nothing is easy. But when I say things are not easy, don't just give up. Mm-hmm. You have to commit. If you, love some, if you love doing something, you have to commit. You have to put in effort. Things are, in one way, things are easy because they are AI, this and that, and so many today. Mm-hmm. But don't go, don't go, don't go the short shortcut. Right, right, right. You won't enjoy the ride. Indeed. You know, like when you reach at that stage, if you learn everything from basics. Um, from basics, mm-hmm. you will have that satisfaction. Right. When you get there, so um, I have had calls from um, you know. Um, I mean, from young, young, right. young, you know, people asking me about how do you get that picture? You know, I tried this one and I, it doesn't work out. Mm-hmm. So I, people, I think today people, I, I got the feeling that they, you know, they think that whatever thing, um, once we start, you know, clicking on the shutter, they mm-hmm. think it should work wonders. Right, that's, right, right. That's not right. how it is. So especially in astrophotography, you need to have, have a lot of patience weight, post-processing is another thing which mm-hmm. is very, very important in right. videography as well. We, people walk behind the curtain a lot doing post-processing and a lot of work. Mm-hmm. So, I bet. so I'm, um, I'm, I mean, I'm just um, reminding um, people, don't give up, you can do it. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm not saying that, you know, I'm, I, I am, I'm, I'm a great, um, Astrophotographer. But you many. have been there. You have yeah, been through the. Yeah, I'm going through. I'm. I'm still. You know, learning everything. Yeah, We're still learning. Forever. So, you can get there as well. Don't give up. If mm-hmm. if you love doing something else, don't give up. Commit your time. 
whether you're from Bhutan or whether you're from Australia or whether you're from the USA or anywhere around the world, mm -hmm. you can do it. Believe, believe in yourself, you can right. do it. Wow, so that's the line. Believe in yourself, Lome. Mm. With this, thank you so much once again for your time and good luck for your days here in Australia. And one thing I would be looking forward to is your photographs from Bhutan someday. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. thinking about it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. And to all the viewers, thank you so much for watching our show. I hope you take away something uh, coming from a very passionate photographer uh, like Sir said. You just have to uh, have passion and patience both passion and patience if you want to get yourself into astrophotography. With this, cut in and have a great time. Thank you.